Welcome to the Pretty Powerful Podcast, where powerful women are interviewed every week to share real inspiring stories and incredible insight to help women or anyone break the barriers, be a part of innovation, shatter the glass ceiling, and dominate to the top of their sport, industry, or life's mission. Join us as we celebrate exceptional women and step into our power. And now, here's your host, Angela Gennari. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the Pretty Powerful Podcast, and my name is Angela Gennari. I am sitting here with Catherine Mason. Thank you so much for joining me today, Catherine. Thanks for having me. So Catherine Mason is the founder and CEO of Sculpt House, a fitness studio and athleisure boutique in Atlanta, Dallas, and online. With over nine years of experience in the fitness and fashion industries, Catherine started Sculpt House after working in New York City as a Wilhelmina fitness model and trainer. Sculpt House is the world's first fitness studio to combine two pieces of specialized, low-impact equipment, the Megaformer and the Woodway Curve Treadmill. A Southern girl with lots of inspiration from her New York City experience, Catherine opened Sculpt House in Atlanta in 2016 to introduce the South to the very best in fitness and fashion. How amazing. Thank you so much. So um, I am super impressed with your bio because I have also followed your journey a bit. And um, I think I was telling you before that I've heard Sculpt House everywhere. Like it has like a cult following and congratulations on your incredible success. Thank you. That is so good to hear because when you're in the weeds, sometimes, you know, you just... You don't, you don't hear all yeah. of that. So well, and you so don't refreshing. take a <laughs> you don't take a moment to step back and appreciate your success. You know, you're grinding, 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 and it's work, 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 and then all of a sudden you're like, "Wow, I did that! I really did something amazing!" Um, and and you are being recognized not just by me, um, but by lots of people. You uh, launched your business in 2016, but have since won UGA Bulldog 100. Fantastic! Yes. Um, you've been on the Atlanta Business Chronicle Pace Setters list, and you uh, were nominated as an emerging entrepreneur with the Atlanta Business Chronicle. And we've kind of lived parallel lives on those last two because I've been in the same boat, so I know how hard it is and how hard you have to work to get there. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. And then you were also on another list. Is it the 20 under 40? Yes. So I was just named in Dallas, which was such an honor because I'm not from there. I do split my time quite a bit between Atlanta and Dallas. Okay. But to win um, the 20 under 40 for uh, Dallas was just such an honor. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. So tell me how you got your start because fitness trainer, um, New York City, I mean, all these are huge things. And then you worked for Mil- Wilhelmina, which is like the one of the, the most you know prestigious modeling agencies in the world. So uh, and you're gorgeous. I mean, it's not surprising. <laughs> so, so absolutely. What what led you to on this journey? Um, honestly, it was sort of crazy that I even stepped off of this cliff almost to uh-huh. uh, pursue a career in fitness. Um, I do have a background in PR and marketing and went hmm. to Georgia for PR. Um, and I had a, a first job out of college that was um, in a, you know, small uh, PR and marketing agency. Yeah. Um, I have known I wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was about, I would say, 14 years old. Awesome. I didn't know exactly what that was. Right. Um, I did work in retail growing up at a women's boutique and thought maybe there was something along that line. Yeah. Um, but it was really when I started saying things like Flywheel and Barry's Boot Camp and these emerging uh, fitness studios coming online. Yeah. Uh, and I learned more about sort of the modeling industry and specifically fitness modeling, which is very different from a normal model that you think of. Okay. Um, fitness models are really sort of like professional athletes and they are sort of athletes acting in these roles as uh, these athletes performing various skills in sports. And growing up uh, playing all different kinds of sports, it seemed like such a fun and amazing way to sort of continue my passion and my skills in athletics um, to do that. And then also to sport these amazing fitness fashion lines 
Um, so it was a combination of my love of fitness, my mm-hmm. love of fashion, and the fact that New York is such a leader in the world for those industries. And I wanted to go to New York and figure out what the heck I was going to do yeah. to create this business one day. And maybe I would meet the right company or person to ultimately come up with what that idea was. And luckily I did. Awesome. It's fantastic. I mean, I love it. And you didn't play like, um, uh, easy sports either. I mean, you played the <laughs> badass sports, field hockey, varsity yeah. field hockey, state champion soccer team. I mean, how amazing. I love your athletic background because I've always been a big fan of fitness and sports myself. And, um, so I love that you're playing these badass sports. So yeah, I <laughs> fantastic. Think I remember one time in school, they made me write an essay about like the two sides of you. And I uh-huh. think in a lot of ways, I'm very feminine uh-huh. and love fashion and love skincare and beauty and these things. But then when it comes to fitness and sports, I'm such a tomboy <laughs> um, and really was growing up. So it is kind of a contrast. But yeah, I like to get down and dirty for sure on the, on the yes. side. Yes. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> so where um, where did you get your inspiration for um, for being an entrepreneur? You said you've been wanted to be an entrepreneur since you were 14. Did your family, were they entrepreneurs? Like, where did you see that um, as a teenager and say, that's what I want? Yeah, that's a great question. So my, uh, the dad side of my family has mm-hmm. uh, had a family owned business for, I think it was around 75 years wow. when they actually um, sold it. So yeah. I grew up watching my dad in a very entrepreneurial type of a setting. My grandfather owned the business before that, my grand- yeah. great-grandfather before that. And of course, it had to evolve over time. It's in it's an engineering business. So yeah. technology changes a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and there were a lot of things that my dad did after you know, two generations prior to him. And so I think that that was an amazing example to me. Um, And also my family is very supportive of locally owned businesses. I think that was from a very young age, something that we talked about. Um, Mm -hmm. My grandfather was very supportive of um, my, my dad kind of taking the reins of that business. And then uh, growing up, when I started talking to him about owning a business, uh, my grandfather and my dad, of course, were were both really encouraging. So yeah. I think that helps. That's really huge. Um, I love that. I love that you get to see it when you were younger and kind of see it in action in a successful way. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, and then as you're going through, you started your business so young. I mean, yeah. you were 25 when you started Sculpt House. And I mean, it's it's not a, an easy thing to start. I mean, a fitness studio, you've survived the pandemic. Mm-hmm. How did you get through that at such a young age and, you know, limited experience at 25 and now you're hit with this massive worldwide pandemic? How do you get through it? Well, I think... Starting a business at 25, yeah. uh, ignorance really was bliss yes. in some ways. <laughs> Absolutely. I had such a fire mm-hmm. for starting this business, I think partially because it was an idea that I really, obviously when you're an entrepreneur, you believe in it, but I, I took two concepts that mm-hmm. were very successful in New York. And if they're successful in New York, they probably are going to be successful a lot of other places Absolutely. too. And I combined those two concepts into one, um, not only on the machine side, the mm-hmm. machines that we combined had never been combined before, but also the fact that the fashion was so integral to the brand. Um, a lot of fitness studios have the activewear as part of their lobby and it's branded, but we really approach that in a different way. And it is really about 50, 50 in terms of revenue if Uh not maybe more now on the clothing side. But, um, all of that was something that I saw was successful in New York. Mm. I really believed in it. And I think being young and honestly, I, didn't like working for someone else. I don't like being told what to do. I can relate. And I just, I really wanted to do it. So I think there's, there's that, you know, getting started. And when you're really Mm -hmm. get to an unhappy point in your first 
job or jobs or five years in business or whatever it is, you kind of get to a point where in some ways you have nothing to lose because you're already yeah. just wanting something so badly to work. Um, in terms of the pandemic, though, I mean, that rocked not only my business, but me personally so much. And I think that I really have had to recover mentally, emotionally from all of that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a much better person today because of it. Yeah. Um, but I think that I had no other choice. And really at the time, it was a decision of, do I want to fight this uphill battle um, mm -hmm. almost like a war? It really sort of was and put everything I can into making this as successful as I possibly can to keep it going? Or was it a great first, you know, five years and maybe that's it. And I'm not the kind of person that's going to take no for an answer. Yeah. I grew up with a very strong, powerful, uh, grandmother who told me at a very young age, can't, doesn't live here. Oh, I love that. And yeah. I think that that's where I really dug down deep to a place that I didn't even know that I had. And we were able to, to come out alive. And of course, um, that's the very short version of it. <laughs> but, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Well, good for you. Because, um, you know, like with my business as well, my businesses like yours, reliant on, <clears throat> on being in person, you know, like I need people in a building in order to do security for them. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, and I need sports to be happening and I need concerts to be happening and all of these things in order for my business to survive. So I can relate to that. And um, did the online version of your business, did that really come out of the pandemic or was that happening before? And did that help to save you in terms of, you know, your, your ability to recover? So in 2019, Obviously, at that point, none of us knew right. <laughs> that any of this was going to go on. Right? right. So no foresight into that. Um, I decided in 2019 that I really wanted to grow the retail side of the business. Um, it was something that I saw increasing in sales significantly, naturally, okay. um, both in person and online. Okay. Uh, but also, not only that, I really felt the desire to make our online presence more significant. Okay. And we started working with a web company to put the infrastructure around our website in a way so that we could have a, an online presence mm -hmm. and not just one for our current customers to go on and maybe pre-order something that we were selling, but right. to also have a more national audience. And we didn't have a lot of that yet. So that yeah. was a big goal that I had. So in September 2019, um, our new website launched. And then, you know, we had a few months um, in 2019 to kind of work through the kinks. Mm -hmm. We had the holidays. Things went pretty well. And then 2020 rolls around and we've kind of gotten um, a few months under our belt with the new website, online ordering, yeah. and then the pandemic actually happened. So wow. luckily, we did have these these things kind of already set up. Was it sophisticated yet? Absolutely not. Right. At least it was there. Yeah. And then when we had to shut everything down and our company of at that time 100 people became a business of one, which was me, and then maybe some other people working part time, but sometimes yeah. it just kind of depended. Um, just put everything into online. Wow. And we actually grew by 230% from 2019 to 2020 online alone. Wow, that's amazing. So it was a huge blessing. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how we would have paid a lot of our bills without, yeah, without that. For sure. Of course, we also had to really invest a lot of money into leaning in and pivoting during that time. Mm. So I think when you hear those numbers, you hear dollar signs. But um, important to also realize that when you have something new, there is infrastructure, there's investment that goes behind Absolutely. all mm -hmm. of that. And so um, in 2021 we were able to maintain a lot of those same numbers. 
as 2020. Mm -hmm. A lot of online companies in 2021 did see pretty significant dips after the pandemic. So I was really proud that we were able to maintain that. And then this year, we're up by about 15% company-wide on the retail side from last year. So just really working hard to continue that growth. Awesome. That is so amazing. I love that story. And I love that you are just set up when yeah. all of this happened. And I mean, what a blessing is that? I mean, yes. that's just, it's incredible. I love it. Um, so tell me about some of the obstacles that you've overcome through your journey. I mean, I know that when, you know, we were talking about, you know, starting our businesses and not having a lot of female mentors in our lives to kind of guide us. And so you, you make a lot of mistakes. So yeah. tell me about some of the obstacles and challenges that you've overcome through your journey and what you would maybe, you know, kind of do differently? Well, I think that a lot of times people see success or you talk about our cult following. Yeah. But I think so much about my story is actually the obstacles that I have overcome. Yeah. I love that you are asking that because I think that's more what my story is and what I want to focus on in the next 10 years of my life is sharing how to get over those obstacles for other small business owners, for other females and being that mentor. Mm -hmm. I would love to be a consultant one day because I have lived through a lot um, and worked through a lot on my own. And I think when you do do it yourself, that's how you really learn. So some examples of that being 25, owning a business at 25, convincing some older men that your concept is uh, the right thing for their, their real estate space. Yes. That was a huge hurdle. It took me a very long time to find a space and find a real estate company that believed in putting me in a five-year lease in a space. Wow. Yeah. So that was one of the first really large hurdles Um, Of course, the build out. I didn't know what I was doing. I had Uh never managed a construction project. Unfortunately, the company that we went with was also the construction company that the shopping center was using to do renovations. And so it was less expensive and supposed to be faster Mm -hmm. to use them than to use another company since they were already on site. Right. Well, what should have been maybe a 90 day build out, that's even being nice, um, (laughs) became like a six month build out. It was just an absolute nightmare. And I had never done it before. Yeah. Um, I didn't know how much construction was supposed to cost. We ran into a lot of issues with the building because it Mm -hmm. was very old and the list goes on. So I think that's another one. Um, Once we were open, operations. I had never run a business before. I never uh, managed people on a level where I was the owner at 25 and I had 30 to 35-year-olds working for me. Yeah. And they also knew that I didn't know what I was doing, Uh, but I was capable and I think they believed in me, but that was really hard. And then you have the customer aspect and I love our customers, but it's not easy. And a lot of our customers are of all ages, of all backgrounds. And I had to sort of navigate that in a new way and, and not take things personally when it was very personal. Yeah. And then that moves into after a few years of operations, we grew and we grew fast and we had grow, growing pains. Mm-hmm. We grew from Buckhead to other locations. We had to close some of those locations during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, but we grew from one to four locations pretty quickly. Yeah. And there were a lot of things with that that I could talk for hours about, but that I now know when... Um, helping other people start their business. I've done everything wrong for them already. And so right. hire me so I can save you a lot of money. Right. Right here. <laughs> um, and then, you know, the pandemic happened. And that was after four years in business. And um, thank goodness in Atlanta, we had that customer base 
to fall mm. back on. But there were a lot of obstacles in Dallas, which was the location, the other location we decided to keep open. Mm-hmm. Um, that location was only about eight months old. Wow. So yeah. there were huge obstacles with that. And, you know, the list goes on. We had to rebuild. We had to pivot. And we have limited budgets and limited people. Mm. And even today, we're seven years in, six years actually forward facing a business, but it's been about seven years of me actually having the business and creating it. Yeah. And so at, at every year, at every turn, there's a new obstacle from lawsuits to pandemics to everything else. And yeah. I think it's just important for people to see that that really is the case. Yeah, I know it. Everybody says, you know, the American dream and this entrepreneurialism yeah. and everybody wants to, oh, that's so amazing that you own a business. I've always wanted to do that. And I'm like, think long and hard. <laughs> Yeah. Think long and hard before you go down this path. Yeah. Love what you do. That yeah. love will get you through it because yes. you're going to hate what you do a lot. Yes. And you're going to probably lose a lot of money. You're going to lose a lot of money. You're going to lose a lot of time. Stupid things that happen that are sometimes not your fault. But yes. yes. I mean, I love being an entrepreneur like you. I don't think I'm unemployable right now. I would hate it if I had to hire me. <laughs> but but I, I love being an entrepreneur, but it, it is a it's an act of love (laughs) to to get up every day and you know knowing the hurdles that you have to overcome every single day you know you don't really have a whole lot of easy days you know unless you're closed for the day (laughs) yeah no it's so true and we're open 363 days a year (laughs) from about 5 30 in the morning to eight o'clock at night yeah almost all of those days oh yeah so it doesn't sleep (laughs) Um, and a lot of times, you know, you have to swallow your pride and realize also that even your employees, a lot of times don't know all that you have going on or all that you do behind the scenes. I work so So much behind the computer. Yep. And I think that they think I'm like at home, like eating bonbons or something, <laughs> which is very much not yes. the case. I think they know that's not actually what I do. Right, right. But, um, you know, I think that there's a lot of, and they shouldn't, they don't have to know. That's not their job to know. Right. But yes, I think there, there's just a lot that you do and you just have to be proud of yourself even when no one knows. Yeah. You, you pat it. yourself on the back, you pour <laughs> yeah. yourself a glass of wine. You're like, I did it. I'm exactly. going to take a 10 minute break before I go do invoices. <laughs> exactly. You're so right about that. Yep. <laughs> so, so who inspires you? Well, I really, I, I think that our employees and our clients really inspire us. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for the experience that I had as a customer yeah. and some of just the mental uh, struggles that I was going through both before New York during my time there and even after and, you know, every day and what fitness can do to yeah. really make you stronger. It's like a therapy session in so yes, many ways. Yes, agree. Um, so, you know, I think we support our customers in that way, but I think our com- our customers also give that back to us. Yeah. And it's so fulfilling. And I think we're also inspired by just our everyday lives. And when we think of new product launches that we're going to do on the boutique side or um, challenges that we do, we really try to be authentic and um, and think about what are we personally going through, uh, what occasions are coming up, you know, whether it's 4th of July or Mother's Day or whatever, yeah. or I'm pregnant right now and we just rolled out a maternity collection oh, and so cool. everything that we do we're inspired by the world around us our customers and also our employees I'm so inspired by them every single day too oh that's super cool yeah I agree with you my employees inspire me too well and the fact that you know I love what I do and yeah. I love it when I can see that passion in them too that makes that makes me so happy because yeah. you know I want to give them something that's fulfilling to them you know and so it makes me happy when they love their job. It's so, so true. Because we've we've probably both been there before. Yes. We don't. Yes. And it, we need them to get us through it sometimes. Yeah. Well, it's just so fulfilling. <laughs> yes. I think one of the most fulfilling things about owning a business is the fact that we do provide jobs. Yes. And we have about 50 employees right now. A lot of them are part-time because uh-huh. we're in fitness. That's sure. kind of how it works. 
But I mean, I applied to so many jobs and didn't get so many jobs. And I like to think that I'm a pretty capable person, right? Um, you know, with a good education and, uh, and work really hard. And it was hard. It's hard to get a job and it's hard to get a job that you love and you want to keep. And yeah. so it's so fulfilling and rewarding to me to be able to provide mm-hmm. careers for people. Awesome. And grow I them. agree. I agree. I agree. I love seeing people thrive. I love seeing people grow in their positions. I love to see people, you know, want to take the next step with you yes, because they trust, the they trust you with their future, you yeah. know, and that is, it's a great feeling. And I love, there was an article I was reading about you and, and it said something about um, how they're there for their, their fitness, for their body, but you all also work with them mentally. You know, you yes. want to make sure mentally that, because I agree, fitness for me is stress relief. I love it. Like I've been working out pretty regularly since I was 16 years old. And I find it to be just an essential part of my day. It's not an option because I need it for my mental stability (laughs) to to go in there and just focus on doing something for an hour, clear my head, you know, whatever it is, and just, just have that time to myself. And that's when I get all my thinking done for the day. It's like, there's fewer interruptions. I can just get focused on what I'm doing and then I can leave with a clear head and I start my day in a better way. So, yeah, I think yeah. it's so important that fitness studios not only focus on the physical, that's yes. such actually a small part yes, of yes. what it is. Mm-hmm. It's also the mental. Yeah. And so we want to empower our clients to live healthier, happier, more empowered lives through fitness, through fashion. That's amazing. And the whole mind body connection, it seems cheesy. But it really is true. And our method yeah. is different in that you really have to kind of connect with your body to be able to use the mega former or the curb, which are human powered machines. Yeah, they're very unusual. They're very different. And they are challenging because they're not um, things that people are used to to using. And so it really does require you to think a little bit more while you're actually working out too. Which yes. Is good for you. Yes, it is good for you. Yeah, because you have to be in the moment. You yeah. can't you can't be on your phone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Doing other things. You have to be in the moment, which we don't do enough in our society in our daily lives. Yes. So. And we actually have a phone policy for that. Where nice. You- Cannot be on your phone, not only for your safety, of course, yes. but also we really want people to take that 50 minutes to escape yes. from all the stuff that's going on outside of those four mm-hmm. walls yes. and take that time for themselves. Yeah. And it's necessary. And, and, you know, you can just connect for just a little bit of time, focus on you, focus on your health. And I think yeah. that's, you'll feel better afterwards. Absolutely. So I have a question. So as women, I know uh, we give our power away a lot, you know, and, you know, like we were, we were actually talking before this and, and I had, you know, congratulated you on your success. And you're like, gosh, it's so, you know, like when we were talking at the beginning of this, you know, it's so weird to hear that because we do get, we, we get into the weeds on things, but also you want to give your power away to everybody else. So it's because my employees did this, because my clients did this, because my grandmother did this and all of those influences in your, in your life are amazing and they help shape you into who you are. But we then give our power away to our spouse. You know, we don't take credit for the things that we've done. Um, or we give our power away so that somebody else can move up and we just stay where we're at. So tell me about a time when you've given your power away um, to someone where you should have stepped into your power. And then tell me about a time that you did step into your power and what the difference was. Why, why did you choose at that time? This is my time. I need to own this moment. Yeah. Well, I do think that when you are younger and you don't have a lot of experience, Mm -hmm. uh, people can take advantage of you. Yes. And I would say that I am not someone that really lets people take power away from me unless I'm maybe not aware. Um, And so, I mean, I'm a very confident person that can also make people annoyed. It's not that I think that I'm amazing and this or that, but it's just, maybe it's from the inner athlete or the inner entrepreneur. You have to have confidence or people are just going to run all over you. Mm -hmm. So I would say that I haven't, um, meant to ever give up power. Good. I really try to, um, speak my mind Uh and, and stand up for myself. But I do think that when you're a young entrepreneur or even if you're 
older and you're starting a new business, you don't know a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so people will take advantage of you. Um, I've had, you know, business consultants that I've worked with and employed that later down the road, I kind of see that. Um, or I've been in a lawsuit before that I should have never been in. And it was someone literally taking advantage. I actually did nothing wrong. Yeah. But it was very expensive. It was very frustrating. It was very hurtful because I was being accused of things that I didn't do. And in retrospect, I would have handled those things a little bit differently. But that's also just coming with experience. Yeah. And I really feel like sort of the like the hard knocks mentality of just like sometimes you have to learn the hard way and you have to learn things on your own yeah. to to get that that experience and I started at 25 I'm 32 now by the time I'm 40 I think I'm really going to know a lot <laughs> um so yeah, I, I would say I haven't really meant to ever give my power away, but you have to really be careful, especially as a female yeah. and especially as a female that is feminine. Um, they think that maybe in Southern, yes. um, I'm polite. I try to be humble, but also if you cross a certain line, I'm really not afraid to tell a man, a woman, whoever exactly where I stand. And I think people have to make sure and do that yeah. for themselves. I love that. I agree with you hundred <clears throat> percent. I agree because, you know, in my position as well with owning a security company, you know, people will challenge me quite a bit, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it really is just about stepping into your power and saying, listen, I'm not going to back down. I know that you think I am, but I promise you I'm here to stay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm here to stay. And a few <laughs> choice words sometimes yes. also work. <laughs> exactly. So what advice would you give to 18-year-old you? I would just say um, to keep to keep going. Uh, can't doesn't live here. I really Good. have gone by that mantra in my life. And listen to your gut. Yes. My gut has been so accurate so many times sometimes I have listened sometimes I have not listened but it was always right I know in those moments don't you hate yourself when you were like I knew better yes, I knew better I was trying to be yeah trying a to be risky, nice <laughs> or I was trying to you know grow yes. or I was trying to this or that and mm-hmm. then yeah it bites you in the butt and yeah. you're like I, I knew better than that yeah and so I think that is one thing as as you're getting going in a business it's yeah. just like you have to sometimes throw spaghetti on the wall and see what works but at the same time um yeah sometimes yeah I I get it. Yeah, my intuition is almost always right. And I rarely listen to it sometimes. (laughs) And then I'm like, I knew better. I knew better than that. But you know, I'm learning, I'm learning. So um, what's next for Sculpt House? Where do you envision this going? Yeah, well, if you would ask me this in 2019, I've had a very different answer. Really? Okay. We have really pivoted a lot as a company. We were in this growth mode of physical locations. Uh And in some ways, I would love an investor to come in and get us back to where we were with that. Sure. Uh, but But I realistically do know that I would have to have a pretty large capital investment. I would want to have the infrastructure and all of that from an investor because I have done it on my own. I'm really proud of that. I could do it again, but to really be successful again, uh, I I know what I need this time if we're going to grow that ge- that geographic footprint to other states and other physical locations, which that would be great. Um, but I also think I'm really happy with where we are now in terms of I'm I'm really happy personally. Um, the fact that like, I'm even having a baby is a really big deal. Yes. Um, because I'm so career driven, I take care of myself last. Uh And so that's a really big step for me. And I really just want to take care of the employees that have been loyal to me. I want to grow them in their careers. Yeah. I want to 
grow the online store. I mean, I would love to have like a $10 million online business one day. And yeah. I think it's possible. Yeah. Um, it's out there. There's a lot to do to get to that point. And then in terms of the workout, just continuing with our education. I recently uh, went to California and got my master certification for Legree, which uh, is the method that we use. Okay. And so that was a really big step and just continuing to invest in education on the fitness side um, and making sure that our customers are also getting all of that knowledge too. So that's, we're in, we're in this rebuilding phase still. And I want to be careful to make sure that we're putting one step in front of the other. I had to learn that very much the hard way during the pandemic. Yes, I know. Well, and we were in the same, like I've mentioned a few times now, we were living parallel lives because yeah. we were set to triple revenue in 29, you know, after 2019, we were just like, we were on a trajectory that was just going to catapult us into the another atmosphere. It's but, so true. but 2020 was like, no, <laughs> you need to sit down and pause a little bit. And it really made me rethink everything about my everything. business. And, you know, it was a paradigm shift. It wasn't just the pandemic. It was a time for me to sit back and say, okay, I feel like I'm running so fast. I'm going to fall on You're my face. So right. And, and You're so, so right. it gives you that time to pause and reflect and say, what do I want out of this? Like, what is my real goal? Is it to, you know, have bazillions and 11 billion locations? Or is it to love my life and provide the quality that I know my brand deserves? Gosh, that is so good. And there was a quote that I'm not even going to attempt to say right now, but mm -hmm. I saw I saw the other day on Instagram, but basically it's how we saw success maybe prior to the pandemic and yes. how we see it now. And now it's really about happiness and choosing every day to do things that make you happy. Yes. And if you're able to do that, that is also success. It doesn't yeah. have to be a dollar figure every year that you're reaching for. I mean, that's great too, but that's not just it. Yeah. So true. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to make sure that we're providing what we set out to provide, which mm -hmm. is a quality experience for our guests, you know, for the people who, who believe in us, yeah. we want to give them back that, you know, that reason to believe. And, you know, if we're only in Georgia, that's okay with me. If we grow a little bit, that's okay with me. But yeah. I just want to make sure that we're, we're not losing ourselves in the, in the, process. And so. that's why you're still around today after the Correct. pandemic. Likewise. Because yes. people have to really yeah. humbly yes. uh, sit down and live, you know, and think through some of those things. They do. Yeah. And and I think that, that it was a blessing of time. It yeah. was a blessing of time and reflection. And entrepreneurs like us who, you know, were going, you know, 100 miles a minute, we were forced to, to sit back for a minute and say, okay, what do I want now? You know, what now? So... Yes. Well, this is awesome. So tell me one last question. What do you want people to know? What do you wish people knew? Well, I think we've talked a lot today about just all the things that go on behind the scenes. I think that you see our Instagram or even my personal Instagram or our website and you see pretty pictures. You see um, very thought through marketing, or at least I hope people think that yes. <laughs> I'm very involved with, with all of that in the business too. Right. Um, of course it should look like that, right? That's, that's a successful business, um, really invest in, in those things. But I think that it's important that we realize all the things that go on behind the scenes with entrepreneurs and have grace with small businesses, um, especially now after the pandemic, we're still all rebuilding. Yes. Numbers are not the same. Right. Um, stop comparing us to Nordstrom or yeah. Barry's Bootcamp <laughs> because it's just, they're very different things. Sure. And so, Absolutely. you know, I, I take customer feedback regularly. It's so important that we do. You're ignorant right. if you don't. Right. But at the same time, sometimes I see on these surveys things and I'm just like, I wish that they understood more. And yeah. so, of course, it's not the customer's job or the employee's job to know all of those things. But I think just as we all go into 
the world, things are finally feeling really good again. Mm-hmm. I think as of maybe like January, February, March of this year, it's right, like, right. We're, we're feeling good. <laughs> um, just have grace, support, you know, those local businesses, shop small mm-hmm. and do everything that you can to uh, just shift your mentality around mm. around them. They're doing the very best they can with limited resources, limited budgets, and, yes. and that's just so important to me. Uh, I could not agree with you more. I mean, as a fellow small business owner, I can tell you that, you know, we had to fight tooth and nail to survive the pandemic. We weren't, you know, <laughs> yeah. Walmart and Home Depot and Lowe's who were like, you know, eight times it. revenue because <laughs> they were the only places that were open. Like we're, we yeah. were fighting tooth and nail to keep food on our tables. So, you know, supporting small businesses is just really, truly something I believe so deeply in. So thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, I really you. enjoyed talking with you. And great. I think this is going to really resonate with a lot of people. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for joining our guests on the Pretty Powerful Podcast. And we hope you've gained new insight and learn from exceptional women. Remember to subscribe or check out this and all episodes on prettypowerfulpodcast.com. Visit us next time. And until then, step into your own power.